Amen. I always say wave it, make the devil mad. Listen, I'm going to take a few moments to lay a foundation from the Scripture uh, from which to operate, and then we're going to act upon what we share with you this morning. This morning's going to be a time of celebration, thanking God for what He has done, what He is doing, and what is yet to come. Amen? But we want to take a moment just to, to lay a foundation. You know, um, as we look throughout biblical history, we can see that God has always taken up residence in places that were built for Him and dedicated to Him. You know, He began, first of all, in Moses' tabernacle in Exodus chapter 25. You'll remember where He said, Bring me an offering. Tell the people to bring me an offering. And He specified the various articles. And He said, And build me a sanctuary, because I want to dwell among my people. And of course, they built the tabernacle, they dedicated it to Him, and the Bible says, the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And then, of course, we know that He later moved uh, from Moses' tabernacle into Solomon's temple. And we, say in, we see in 2 Chronicles chapter 5 that once they finished the tabernacle and dedicated it, that the trumpeters and the singers were as one, with one voice, you know, singing and praising God, saying, The Lord is good and His mercy endures forever. Then the house was filled with the cloud, even the glory of the Lord, so that the priest could not even stand to minister by reason of the cloud. Woo! God has always taken up residence in places that were built for Him and dedicated to Him. And this dispensation is no difference. The only difference is that God is no longer living or dwelling in a building made of brick or mortar or stone. But He's dwelling in a temple made by His own hands. Your, your heart and mine, a living, moving, breathing temple. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and 16, Know ye not that you are the temple? of the Lord, and that the Holy Spirit of God dwells in you. So we, collectively and personally, are the habitation, the dwelling place of God through His Spirit in the New Testament dispensation. Amen. God wasn't satisfied in Moses' tabernacle. He wasn't content in Solomon's temple. He was looking for the day when he could actually take up residence in your heart and mind, a living, moving, breathing temple whose temple we are. Amen. Everybody say, we are the temple, are the temple. Of, God. of God. Amen. Now, in the Old Testament, there was a priesthood from the tribe of Levi. And it was the responsibility of the priesthood to offer the sacrifices of the temple as required by the law as uh, oracles of worship. And so it was their responsibility. And there were daily sacrifices, there were weekly sacrifices, there were annual sacrifices, there were wave offerings, grain offerings, offerings given for restored health. I mean, you name it, they had it. And it was the responsibility of the priesthood to offer those sacrifices on behalf of the people in the temple. Well, what I want you to realize this morning is that in this New Testament dispensation, the institution of the priesthood still exists. Did you know that? How do we know that? Well, right here. Why don't you look in 1 Peter chapter 2, 1 Peter chapter 2, and verse 9. The institution of the priesthood still exists in the New Testament dispensation and the New Testament temple. The Bible says, you, that's you and me, are a what? Chosen generation a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of Him who has called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. Glory to God. So in this New Testament dispensation, in this New Testament temple, you and I as the sons and daughters of God constitute the New Testament priesthood. 
And it is the responsibility of the priesthood to offer the sacrifices of the temple. Now, let me give you a little history lesson. In the Old Testament, God is separated from man because of sin. Right? We understand that. And we know according to Romans 6.23 that the wages or the payment or the compensation necessary for sin is what? Death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So, because the payment or the compensation necessary for sin is death, and in the Old Testament man is separated from God because of sin, God said, I'm going to devise a temporary solution for the sin problem. And he said, here's what we're going to do. Every year, once a year, the high priest and only the high priest will come into the very presence, my presence, and he will shed the blood of a goat or calf or animal and sprinkle the blood of that animal upon the altar and, and sprinkle its blood on the mercy seat. And I will receive the blood of that animal as compensation or atonement or payment for one year. And we will call that day the day of atonement, the day of payment, the day of compensation. And you ask, well, why blood? Because Leviticus chapter 17 and verse 11 says, Leviticus 17, 11, the life of the flesh is where? In the blood. And I've given it to you upon the altar to make atonement or payment or compensation for your souls. For it is the blood that makes atonement or payment for the soul. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 9.22, without the shedding of blood there can be no remission of sin. So God said, once a year, this is our temporary solution. The high priest will come on the day of atonement, the day of payment, the day of compensation, and he will shed blood. I'll receive that as a substitute for your life, the life of the animal, the blood of the animal, until I can bring the final solution, which he did. Matthew 1 and 21. She shall bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. How? By offering his own blood. Once and for all, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundations of the world, shedding his own blood upon the altar of the cross, eternally purchasing our salvation and remitting all the sins of anyone who will receive the sacrifice. Has anybody received the sacrifice? Woo! Then I've got good news for you. God is not counting up and holding against you your trespasses. The Bible says God was personally present in Christ, reconciling and restoring the world to favor with Himself, not counting up and holding against men their trespasses, but canceling them. Woo! Hallelujah! Not by the blood of of goats and calves, but by His own blood, He entered once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Hebrews 9 and 12 says, I think, glory to God. So, the good news is, that sacrifice never has to be offered again. It has been offered once and for all. And yet now, here we are, New Testament dispensation, New Testament temple, New Testament priesthood, and there are still sacrifices that must be offered. But it's not the blood of bulls, goats, pigeons, or doves. What are they? Well, look right here. 
First Peter chapter 2. What kind of sacrifices are they? Verse 5. Anybody with me? 1 Peter 2 and 5, You also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up what? Spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. So, in this New Testament dispensation, our sacrifices as the priesthood are spiritual in nature and origin. Are you with me? Now, the New Testament tells us exactly what those sacrifices are. One of them, of course, is listed in Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a what? A living lifetime sacrifice. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove and demonstrate what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So, one of the sacrifices we're to offer is the presentation of our lives, moment by moment, day by day, living this thing out as a sacrifice in submission and love and honor to God. Worship is not an event. Did you hear me? Worship is not an event. It is a lifestyle. And so our worship to God includes this sacrifice of our lives moment by moment, day by day. All right, that's not my emphasis. Here's the second sacrifice that I want to emphasize this morning, and then we're going to act on it. Uh, Hebrews chapter 13. Anybody with me? Hebrews chapter 13. <clears throat> Verse 15. By Him, by Jesus Christ, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. And then, he goes on to tell us exactly what that sacrifice of praise consists of. No need to guess or speculate. He said, By Jesus Christ, offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is, this is the sacrifice. What? The fruit of my lips giving thanks unto His name. Are you with me? So true praise demands always the expression of the heart in thanksgiving to God through the lips or the mouth. That is what is acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. The fruit of the lips giving thanks unto His name. Amen? So when someone says, let's praise the Lord, that's the time for the hands to go up, the mouth to fly open, and the thanksgiving to ascend. Right? How do we know that? Because the Bible tells us in Psalm 34, verse 1, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be where? In my mouth. <laughs> yeah, in my mouth. Psalm 71 and verse 8, it says, Let my mouth be filled with thy praise. 71, 8. Filled with thy praise all the day. Right? So, Praise demands the expression of the heart in thanksgiving through the lips or the mouth. So this morning, we're going to offer the sacrifice of praise. Now, you can clap and get happy. We get I clap with the music, you know, clap your hands all you people shout unto God with a voice of triumph, right? But sometimes people substitute an external action for an internal response. Clap if you want to, but don't forget to open your mouth and give Him praise. What? Thanksgiving. Right? Now let me give you a definition of praise. Praise in the Hebrew. In the Hebrew. It means to shine. That has something to do with your countenance. Amen? Shine. Everybody say shine. And then it means to make a show. Make a show. What's that mean? Well, I'll be demonstrating that for you in just a little while. Woo! 
make a show. When I, you know, I travel a, a great deal. That's my whole ministry traveling. So when I come home, I generally bring my, I've got little girls. I got a six and a half year old and a five and a half year old. And when I come home, man, I always bring them a little something, you know, even if it's just a snack from the room. They think that's awesome. My little one, she always says, Daddy, did you bring some snacks? She got a little snacks with it. I said, yeah, honey, I got some snacks. And, and boy, when I bring their little present or their snacks, they don't just stand there and say, thank you, Daddy. I mean, they get all excited. Woo, they start making a show. <laughs> oh, they get happy. They are demonstrating their enthusiasm. That's what praise is. That's one aspect of praise. Shine. Make a show. Woo. Then it goes on to say, boast, to boast. Man, just to talk about how awesome He is. How amazing He is. To shine, to make a show, to boast. Here's the other meaning, to celebrate. You ever seen anybody celebrate? Listen, they don't stand there at the basketball game and the football game when somebody, uh, you know, makes a a basket or scores and go, well, isn't that wonderful, Martha? <laughs> Man, when you're a fan, I mean, you get excited. <laughs> they rip their shirt, paint all over it, just get wild. And you know what? People don't think anything about that. They're all, oh, they're so passionate. Well, friends, listen. Jesus did a lot more than take a a bag of wind down the field. He saved us. Redeemed us. Lifted us up. Woo! I can make a show about it. I can celebrate it. Get happy. And I'm going to in a few minutes. Everybody say shine. shine. Make a show. Make a show. Boast. Boast. Celebrate. celebrate. Now here's the last part of it. It means to commend or speak favorably of. To commend or speak favorably. If I said, uh, Dorinda, that was such an awesome time of praise and worship this morning. Thank you, praise and worship team. I am what? I'm speaking favorably of them. Commending them for the job they did. Well, that's one thing we do in Christ. A part of our praise is what? Commending and speaking favorably. Thank you. Thank you for making us new creations in Christ. Thank you, Lord, that you've raised us up and made us sit together in heavenly places. Thank you that you've redeemed us from the curse of the law. You've called us out of darkness into your marvelous light. We've passed out of death into life. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Get happy about it. Now that's the Hebrew. Now the prayer praise in the Greek is this, and it gets a little more personal. The genuine, that means heartfelt, confession. There's the mouth again. Praise can't be given without the mouth. The genuine confession of facts in one's life that gives glory to God. Are you listening? So that means what He's done for you personally. When He saved you, Filled you with the Holy Ghost. Turned your life around. Healed your body when the doctor said there wasn't any way. Anybody in here ever, honestly now, been healed by the power of God? Raise your hand. You've been healed of some type of a sickness or disease or infirmity. Wonderful. Praise God. And when He healed you, when He delivered you from those drugs and alcohol or whatever the lifestyle was and set your feet on solid ground and turned you around and started you walking the other way. Ooh, thank you for that. When he helped you pay your house note, and dear God, you didn't know how you were going to do it. Or get that car or meet your needs this month, and boy, in the checkbook doesn't look like it, but every need was met. See what I mean? What he's done. And thanking him for that. So here's what we're going to do. The word of the Lord has come unto us saying that this is the time and season of fulfillment for you. A time of plans and purposes and dreams coming true. A time or season of restoration of that which the thief has stolen. Anybody had anything stolen? Hey, we're going to get some restoration. 
an outpouring of divine provision from on high. Why? He said for the purpose of consummating and completing divine assignments. For the coming of the Lord is drawing nigh. And then his word to us, so rejoice in this season. Stand strong in faith. Decree. This is our season of fulfillment. God has spoken and it shall be. So what we're going to do this morning is we are going to offer the sacrifice of praise to God as God's family Bible church personally and corporately. We're going to offer the sacrifice of praise not only what God has done and is doing but what is unfolding. We're going to praise Him in advance. Are you with me? Because there's power in praise. Sometimes you've prayed your prayer. You're standing your ground. There's nothing left to do but praise Him. Praise can change things. Look here in Acts. You know these scriptures. Acts chapter 16. Man, this is one of my favorite. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Why? Because He's good. <laughs> and His mercy endures forever. He deserves praise because He's good. Acts 16, verse 25. You remember this story? And at midnight, maybe you're at midnight right now, Paul and Silas bawled and squalled and said, Why me? Huh? Oh, excuse me. Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God in a little bitty tiny voice where nobody could hear it. Oh, I'm reading that wrong. And the prisoners heard them. Everybody did. And suddenly, everybody say suddenly. There was a great earthquake. So that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately, all the doors were open. And everyone's bands were loosed. You might be in a situation right now, you need a suddenly. Once you've prayed and praised, you qualify for a suddenly. And what I love about this, this story is, you know, hey, not just their prison door opened, but everybody in the vicinity, all their doors were open. <laughs> and their shackles loosed. You can just be in the room this morning. You better turn that air condition up because I'm going to get hot. You might just be here in the room this morning and the praise of God start br opening prison doors, bringing liberty, knocking off those chains. Anybody with me? So here's what we're going to do in a moment. Not right now, but in a moment. I'm going to ask you in a moment to stand. And then on the count of three, I'm going to say one, two, three. We are going to lift up a shout of praise, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks unto God. We're going to shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Now God likes shouting. He's not hard of hearing, but He's not nervous either. And there's something about shouting, because you go back to the Old Testament, and in every battle plan of God, He always has to get that shout in. Do this, do that, and then everybody shout. He likes it. It's like the countdown. And we're going to shout this morning. We're going to scare every devil in this vicinity. Any walls that have been erected to stop the advancements of this work, we're going to shout them down. Any prison doors or shackles that have been upon your life, we might as well just shout them off. Praise them off. Amen? And it's not emotionalism, friends. There's power in true praise. Why? Because God inhabits the praise of His people. And when we praise Him and He begins to inhabit that praise, things start happening. So we're going to give Him a shout of praise. And you say, well, maybe you've never shouted before in your life. Well, just let her rip. You know, it's like that old detergent says, for the tough stains, you've got to shout them out. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to shout it out. Well, there's a shout because you got it, and there's a shout to get it. You might have to shout to get it, but then we'll shout, you'll get it. Amen. Woo! So we're going to do that. And then, after we shout a few minutes, I'm going to ask different ones of you, as your heart prompts you, get this thing here, so I don't turn it over. I have done that before. Turned over cups of water in the pulpit. I'm moving it back now. 
get me some dancing room. Listen. I was raised Southern Baptist, but when I got baptized in the Holy Ghost, I've been wild ever since. I'd never seen anybody dance in the Spirit in my life. Never in my denomination. And man, I got baptized in the Holy Ghost, and one of the first meetings I went to, they got happy like they did this morning with that music. And I mean, all of a sudden, I just took off. They called me the electric chicken. <laughs> I said, I look like the electric chicken. <laughs> Woo! Sometimes it's joy unspeakable and full of glory. You can't speak it. You can't articulate it. You got to dance it, shout it, run it. Woo! You better make me some running room around here. So we're going to shout. And we're going to praise. And then I'm going to ask different ones of you, as your heart prompts you, just to come up. And, and we'll, you know, if we have more than, you know, a few, then just make a little line. And I'll, I'll motion for you to come and give me a couple of ushers, you know, down here to help the ladies up. And I just want you to come tell us something good that God has done for you. If He healed you in this house, come tell us. If He's blessed you, come tell us. If He helped you get this paid or that paid or whatever, turned your marriage around or your children, whatever, come tell us. And let us make a show over it. Let us celebrate with you. And let us celebrate the goodness of God. Now let me, let me qualify, please, and everybody listen carefully. And I'm not trying to be rude. I just want you to understand. I'm not asking for your latest revelation of the Scripture. Right? I don't want a mini-sermon. This is a short, concise, to-the-point praise report. Right? So we keep the momentum. Because, you know... Sometimes folks just want to give all the details. These, this is headliners. Ladies. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Headliners. But hey, tell us enough. I got to get my hanky because I know I'm going to need it. Where is it? To wipe off. Okay. Everybody got that? So first of all, we're going to give a shout. Then I'm going to ask different ones as your heart prompts you. Come up and give us a short praise of something God's done for you. And we're going to celebrate it, make a show, get happy. All right? Everybody stand up. God's been good to this house and to this people. Now, Eddie, is this microphone up in here? Okay, because I want to be able to hear those testimonies when they come forth. So you might want to turn it a little bit. All right, everybody ready? On the count of three now, we're going to lift our voice in a shout of praise. I just want you to thank God for what he, who He is, what He's done, and just thank Him for what He's done for us in Christ and, and for you here in the church. And then we'll do that for a minute, and then we're going to get some personal praise and testimony. Are you ready? One, two, three. Hallelujah! <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord. You've been so good, so faithful, so mighty. And we praise you and give you glory. <laughs> we give you glory. <laughs> The chains are coming off. The walls are falling down. <laughs> the healings are manifesting. Thank you, Lord. Praise Him for what He's done. You've redeemed us. Delivered us. Set us in a new place. Oh, we give you glory. Oh, yeah. He will up this morning started you on his way give him the glory somebody give him glory give him praise Woo! you got a right to praise him somebody shout in this place you got a right to praise him you ought to praise the lord Let's go on it. 
give you praise. All right now, I want somebody, somebody come up here and tell us how good God's been to you. Come on, honey. Let me help you. Tell us how good he's been. The Lord healed my son with vow and continence that he lasted 21 years. <laughs> Somebody come tell us how good he's been. Come on, honey. I'll help you. Tell us how good the Lord's been. God. Well, for the past year, I was having injections directly in my left eye. I could not see out of my left eye. I relocated here and the doctor started giving me injections. He told me that there was a limited blood flow to my left eye. Well, Friday night when you lay hands on me, I close my eye, I, I can see everything. how good he's been to you come on tell us how good he's been i don't know if you all remember me but i was here in 2008 and i had a mastectomy went to mexico to be with my daughter took all the medication there my husband had a heart attack passed away my daughter and i got very close after eight years of being separated I came back in December for my final operation and I'm completely cancer free. been swollen since April the 3rd until Friday night. Amen. And I was laying in the bed and I said, honey, my legs aren't swollen anymore. That was because I got a blessing from everybody that I helped yesterday. Hey. Somebody make a show. Hey, yeah. <laughs> Who's got a praise? Who's got a praise? Honey, come on, sir. I'll take you. Tell us how good he's been to you. I would like to say, God been blessing me as yesterday. When you lay in my, on me, I received Christ. I received the blood of Jesus. I felt at that time, I felt, I felt a fire coming on my on my ears. I've been shaking and shaking all in the name of the Lord. Amen. <laughs> How good he's been to you, honey. My aunt passed away last year. We um, came to live with her, but she passed away, and I got kicked out with all my kids, and God provided me with a home rent-free to stay for two years. <laughs> oh, he's a good God. Tell us how good he's been, honey. God has been so good to me. In 2011, the doctors put their hands up and said I wasn't going to make it out of the hospital. But with God's strength and his love, I made it out of here. I am. Here she is. Nobody praise is here. Come on, honey. Stand right here. Tell us how good he's been. My husband is not here this morning because he's at work. But I'm going to take the liberty of telling you what he said. Friday night, uh, previously the doctors uh, informed him that he's beginning the stages of cataract. And he's been complaining for not being able to see clearly, especially at work. Friday night when he went home, he said for the first time in months, he can see clearly. Praise us on our way. Tell us how good he's been to you. Yes, I want to um, I want to praise God and worship him for the greatness and the goodness in my life. After I lost three sisters, one mother, one father, and my life, I was so empty. But now I get my joy back. And praise the Lord. I thank God for that. Thank you. Hallelujah. I want more of this microphone to fight. 
Not the music, but the mic. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Lord. Tell us how good it's been to you, honey. All right, I am so blessed. Um, God not only worked with us. Okay. All right. Um, I have a son that lives in New York. And he... All right, just a moment. Take the music out of the monitor. That's what we'll do. Just that, That'll help us. All right, and keep going out there. All right, tell us. I have a son that lives in New York. He's almost 40. He's been going through a really rough time. We've been talking on the computer through Facebook, and instead of playing games, we've been talking about God. I am so blessed. He started going to church with his wife, with his um, daughter. He loves God. He, well, that's what we talk about now is God, 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 God. I'm so happy. Thanks. Somebody shout a little bit. Come on up here, brother. Tell us how good he's been, too. I've been coming to church for the past nine years, and uh always wanted to feel the Holy Spirit and every time I see other people feeling the Holy Spirit I'm like these people are like they're not for real Friday Pastor Marty laid his hands on me for the first time I felt it <laughs> the best feeling ever <laughs> hallelujah <laughs> Jesus <laughs> oh bless you honey tell us how good God's been to you God's been very good to me. He gave me this church and he gave me a people in my life. I came from Connecticut, living a very dysfunctional lifestyle, drug free, clean free, loving God. Got a beautiful daughter here with me, grandchild on the way, and I just love you all. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah! <laughs> Woo! Somebody shout a little bit in here. Tell us how good he's been to you. Since Friday night, my blood pressure for a year and a half been 200. I've been on 11 different medications. I was passed out here on the floor Friday night. I'm here this morning, no medication. Thank God. Somebody shout a little bit. Woo, glory. Thank you, Lord. Come on, honey. Tell us how good he's been to you. Well, I have told this story to the church before, but maybe somebody needs to hear it. I was one thought to this maybe a year or two ago for by the IRS. They said I owed it this four thousand dollars. We had fasting. I brought my prior every night to fasting. At the end of the fasting, I got a letter from the IRS. They said, we have recalculated your tax. The amount you owe is zero. They send me back $8,400. Told her she owed 80000 and gave her eight. Come on. All right, tell us, honey. How good's he been to you? Well, back in um, 2002, I had a heart transplant, and they gave me um, a life expectancy of 10 years. This April 16th, it'll be 11 years. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm going to keep going. Last year, they told me I had a heart valve leaking, and they wanted to open my chest back up and uh, either replace my heart valve or repair it. I told them, no, we're not going to do that. I came home. I prayed with Pastor Bo. I went back, they did another echo, and they said, I don't need surgery. <laughs> Glory! <laughs> Give me praise! <laughs> Tell us how good he's been to you. I've been spending the last year having to work nights away from my wife, who I just got married to April 21st of last year, and nothing's bugged me more, and there's been a block about it. This week, I got a call from a corporate supervisor who has no reason to call me, telling me, starting a week from now, you're not reporting to who you're reporting to already. You're going to start reporting to me. I'm going to decide your schedule. And here's the hint. You're not working nighttime anymore. You're going to be home at night with your wife. Honey, tell us, tell us how good he's been. Um, I've been side by for more than five years after my dad passed away. And my life was like very easy without my dad. And right now, I can't 
feel the joy of God and my life is so fulfilled and, and I don't know I can just like worship and jump all over the place go ahead <laughs> Anybody else want to tell us how good he's been? Oh, come on. I applied to refinance my home to modify my home. They rejected us three times. And I came here last year. We fasted 14 days. And I said, Lord, before the fasting is over, I need an answer. And what I ask God is to bring my mortgage down half of what I was paying. And I got it. I am one year now. Half of my mortgage down, down. And I thank God. <laughs> Here. My legs start getting wobbly sometimes. I, they're so skinny. Tell me. I just have to thank God because me and my kids moved to Palm Coast in 2011. And I was sleeping on my sister's couch and they were sharing a bed in her house. And since we've been here, all our bills have been paid. Every need has been met. And there are even times when we have money left over to do what we want to do. And I know it's because I put all my trust in him. And I counted on him. And I decided to get right with God. And I just have to thank him because I am so blessed and so blessed. Somebody celebrate with him. radical for the Lord. When I hear healing, I get crazy because he has healed my ankle and he has healed my lower lumbar bruise. Praise the Lord. Somebody shout. Come on up. Who's going to do the talk? Tell us how good he's been. Uh, God's been very good to me. I thank him so much. Uh, before I found this church, I was one miserable person, angry. I never felt so happy in my life. I just want to thank God. He blessed me with my wife, my children. It's been hard for them, but he's healed them. And that's, that's what I'm thankful for. He can hold it together. Somebody shout a little bit in here. Hey, come on. Anybody else want to come testify? If not, we're going to do a final. Anybody, come on, honey. Tell us how good he's been to you. Oh, praise God. Tell us. I shared a testimony already about my sister who had a stroke. She had a bad stroke. And her right side was paralyzed and she couldn't speak. And we've been at Arizona Dominica, you know, in the island. And within five days, my sister was home completely whole, walking and everything. There's no distance in prayer in the power of God. Come on, honey. Come tell me. I'll get you in just a second. Come on. Just one second. Tell us how good he's been to you, darling. Praise God. I've been coming to this year off and off for five years, but I always come back. Last year, I lost everything. And now, as I can tell you, we have a home, and we're back in church, and we're happy. And we're happy. Thank you. Woo! Thank you, Lord. Praise God for that, people. Come on, honey. That's so precious, darling. Before this church was ever going to begin, um, I had a miscarriage, and I was devastated. And I wanted every reason to not, every, people would have understood that I wouldn't have started children's church, but I did. And even though it was years later, after 10 years of being infertile, and going to specialists and paying thousands of dollars, I have four kids. Somebody shout! Come on! Oh, yeah! Well, in 2010, I found out that I needed a sense in my heart. And I said to 
doctor, I think I'm fine. There's nothing wrong. And I refused to go, but he finally got hold of me and did it. And then I wound up in 2011 being told I needed a, a pacemaker and defibrillator. And I didn't want to do it, but I did because I knew God was leading me to the right place. And I want to thank him so much for giving me so much life and joy. And I thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for all life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's called making a show, celebrating. Tell us, honey, how good's he been to you? God has been awesome to me. I have the best life ever because of the grace of God. I thank God for my husband and my kids. And most of all, I, I prayed. I just finished my master's a few months ago. I had some challenges, but God took me through it. And I just want to give him glory for all that everything he's done. That's praise. That's praise. You've got a right to praise him. My name is Marie. I moved to Palm Coast about four years ago. I mean, excuse me, four months ago. And I've been praying the same prayer for about 45 years. And I said, God's not answering. And I've been orphaned from a child. And all I wanted from God was a family. I passed childbearing age. It's not happening. So I said, you know, I just give up. I think it was Sunday before last. I kept hearing the Lord said, I've given you a family. I've given you God's family. And I looked up at the sign of the name of the church. And people kept saying, why'd you come to Palm Coast? And now I know. Because God's promise has been fulfilled in my life. I came to a city of strangers. And now I have a family of friends. And I thank God. <laughs> Tell us how good it's been, bro. Those of you guys that know me, I've been in this church for almost five years now. I went up to 255 pounds. I was a size 44, and in three months, I decided I'm going to lose weight. I'm 197 pounds now. I'm size 36, and I can run seven to ten miles straight with not stopping. <laughs> I knew I didn't recognize him. I thought I did. Glory to God. Come on up here, honey. Woo! My name is Sandra. I'm almost 71 years old. The devil tried to keep me sick, but I won't claim it. I know God is going to heal my yeah. body. Yeah. And I'm so thankful that he's healing me. He, uh, the devil wants me not to walk, but I will walk in Jesus' name. Yes! And she's praising him in advance. Oh, yeah! Hey, look like you're doing a good job. The name of Jesus. <laughs> 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 Woo! Completion, completion. Amen. Come on, somebody. Come tell us how good he's been, brother. Uh, the Lord has really been amazing for me. Um, my junior year, because I go to Palo Lopez, I go to a prep school. In my junior year, my family we didn't have any of the finances for me to stay in that school. And then we sat down with the principal, and he said, "There's no way." that I can have you leave this school. We need students like you here, and it just goes to show that the blessings of God are here, and there's something that he sees in me yes. that that there's a reason why I have to be Thank there. You. And then, and then it's just, every single time somebody sees me, they always ask me, why, Johnny, why are you so happy? And I'm just like, because I have the joy of God inside yeah. of me. Somebody talk about favor now. Woo, bless your heart, man. Glory to God, I love to see young people. Anybody else? Come on, bro. Tell us how good he's been. Woo! Tell us how good he's been. God, I'm reporting that the devil is a liar. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He has healed me from my right in my hands. He has healed my knee. Hallelujah. And you know that bone that goes down in your, in the, in your back? Hallelujah. God has healed me from it. And he has healed me, hallelujah, from three strokes. Hallelujah. God, somebody praise Jesus. Oh, honey. Ooh, I'm 
getting a little wobbly here. Praise God, a couple months ago, I was uh, here, it was during the, the ladies' conference, I was having a terrible pain in my left side. I mean, it was so bad that I could not sleep on my, my side, I couldn't get in my bed, I couldn't hold my back, I could not do anything. Not even my clothes I could put on. But tonight, today, I'm here to say that God is a healer. God has taken that infirmities and he has bore that sickness in his body. By his stripe, I'm healed. 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 Hi, my husband's been in the hospital for the last couple of weeks and God has given me the strength and the peace to, to keep going and not only is he healing him, but he's doing a new thing in him. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Doing a new thing in him. You got another one. Tell us. I cannot let it go. I cannot stop. God is so good. He's so good to me. Hey, guys, I've been here, Pastor, for grace of my wife who bring me here I don't know how to say it. she's the lady of God Hallelujah. Pastor I'm a veteran I've been on the war two times I almost almost lost my life five different occasions but the day of the Lord I'm here today and I'm saying God please hold me hold me God I want to serve you I want to follow you I want to follow you God serve me hold me hold me hold me hold me he's holding on to you brother Woo, glory to God somebody shout in this place Woo. he can not only save you he can keep you Keep you. Oh, you got a right to praise him. We got a right to praise him. All right now. Listen up, everybody. Listen up. We're going to give a final praise. What are we going to praise him for? We're going to praise him in advance. See, now listen. Peter said, Peter said, having not seen, yet believing, you do something. What? You rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. You might have your faith on some things and it hasn't made its transition yet. But what are we going to do today? We're going to praise Him in advance. So I want to ask you a question. On the count of three, I want to ask you, and then I'm going to count to three and you demonstrate it. How would you praise God? How would you? If you knew everything you've been believing for that He's promised, that you've seen in your spirit was already a present reality because in the mind of God it is. How would you praise Him? Why don't you demonstrate it? One, two, three. <laughs> assembled together and the house started shaking sometimes the Holy Ghost gets on you you just start shaking you can take the most peaceful person in the world look 
come up to 110 volts of electricity, they're going to lose all their dignity. What is it, honey? Yes. Okay. All right. All right, come up. Let's lay hands, Pastor. You're in authority. You're in. Come lay hands on him just real quick here. Then we're going to go back. But we're praising God in advance now for his healing. Amen. You keep that music, you know, on the side. In the name of Jesus, we curse any cancer. And we command this spirit of infirmity, loose him. Go from him. Loose his body in Jesus' name. And healing be in Jesus' name. Somebody praise him. Oh! All right, friends. One more time before we go. I'm going to turn it back to past. I just want to shout one more time. Are you ready? One, two, three. Worshiping, keep singing. 